it's Kate Norstrup and I'm doing a small series of practical business strategies you can use to grow your business. A little how-to section, nuts and bolts. So if we've never met before, hello, I'm the best-selling author of Money, A Love Story and I have built a thriving high six-figure online business with my husband Mike from our home in Maine. Uh, while raising a toddler and I'm really excited to share a little bit about how we've built our email list with you today. Um, we have about 60,000 people on there right now and we've used a variety of strategies. Um, so I'm going to share with you how we've done it. But first I want to say that if you don't understand why you need to be growing an email list and how that would serve your business, I recommend hopping back over to the video I shot yesterday about why communicating with your email list is not bugging them and how to do it and why that's keeping you small, why that belief that it might be bugging people is keeping you small and why it's not doing your customers any favors either. Hi, Suze. So, uh, hop back over there. Over 4,600 people have watched that video and there's lots of comments, so people are loving it. And um, I wanted to talk to you about growing your email list because it's a really common kind of like, well, you know, I, I my list I've been trying and you know, I only have a few people and I don't know how to do it and da da da. And that is totally normal to not know how to do it at first, which is why I am coming to you from the, with this video. I am in a hotel room um, in Lexington, Massachusetts. We come down here uh, twice a month to get these skin treatments for my baby's skin and we get a hotel room for the day so she can nap. Uh, she chose to not nap today though, so she's downstairs in the lobby with her daddy. So I'm gonna do this video and then we're going to our second appointment and then we're gonna drive home to me. But anyway, that's why the random microwave behind my head. Okie dokie. So, yeah, Jamie, um, I can link to the video that I shared uh, yesterday in the comments here, and I will, I will post that after I'm done with this video, sure. Okay, so, th so three strategies to grow your email list. I'm gonna share with you the ones that we have done in the last five months or so that have been really successful. And they're proven because they've worked for us and they've worked for a lot of other entrepreneurs as well. And what's really important to know about growing your list is the point is not about just getting the numbers, right? Because if you have a list of 100,000 people, but only 1% open your emails, like who cares? I would rather you have a list, I'm gonna do numbers that I can actually do the math on. <laughs> I would rather you have a list of 1,000 people with a 50% open rate than 10,000 people with a 1% open rate. I believe the math on that works out. But basically what I'm saying is you want quality over quantity. And my first few years um, having a website, having a blog, doing any sort of online marketing, I had you know a relatively small list. It started at 400 people and then over time it grew to like 3,000 and then you know it's, it's grown over time. Now we have 60,000 people on our list. And we have um, higher than average, you know, higher than industry standard open rates and engagement rates because we nurture our list. We take care of them. We're not just seeing them as potential sales. Like, I, th I think it's really an honor to be in somebody's inbox. I know how much I, how discerning I am about who I let into my inbox. And so I really consider it an honor when people let me in there. In there. So, um... Okay, so strategy number one is doing some kind of online challenge. So I'm sure you've seen these. My friend Sarah Jenks just finished up with her Live More Challenge. Um, my friend Chris Carr just was doing a, the Green Drink a Day Challenge. And we did one this past January called the Do Less Experiment. So in previous years, we had done the Money Love Challenge. If you ever did the Money Love Challenge with me or if you were part of the Do Less Experiment, please comment below and let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to say hi. Um, but what that does is it creates an online event where people are opting in at a certain time and then they're joining you for the challenge and there's social sharing and there's a hashtag and people are all 
participating at the same time in daily small dose activities that are moving them towards a certain result. So the do less experiment, I called it an experiment rather than a challenge because it was geared for people who are recovering overachievers like me. And honestly, I don't think that we need, hi Suze, I'm glad you did the money love challenge. Um, I don't think that recovering overachievers need another challenge. Like life is already challenging enough. And so I called it the experiment. And it was basically what would happen if you for 14 days did less? What would happen? Would your life blow up? Or perhaps could you in fact create more space for what matters through doing less? And uh, I had some great testimonials that it was life changing for people and it was free. It was 14 days, so people opted in. We had a special list within our email provider, which is Entreport, um, and we sent them a little bite-sized email every day. It had a quick video of me giving them the experiment and then we encouraged them to share on social media and we gave prizes away every day, which were, um, which were either my digital products or digital products from my girlfriends, um, some of the other women I know in the online business space. So um, that was a really great list builder because as with the social sharing component, people wanted to join the challenge and then they ended up on our list and I continued to nurture them through my weekly uh, blog, which if you don't know how to nurture your list in a helpful way that's that's valuable for them, go back and watch the Facebook Live from yesterday where I talked about why the belief that sending emails to your list is bugging them is not doing your customers any favor and it's keeping your business small. So you go back and watch that video. Okie dokie, so that's number one, is doing an online challenge. I did it so that there was not an offer at the end of it. Um, there was an, there was, it wasn't like part of the launch of a big course. Some people, do their free challenge and it's part of the launch of a bigger offering, either way is fine. I'm just saying for us, we chose not to. It was really simply an event that was for creating a community and building our list and growing our community and giving free value. We also had a Facebook group, which is a really great component of um, an online challenge. Okay, thing number two, strategy number two is a one day summit. So I had suggested to me to do a summit and I was like, heck no, there is no way I'm putting together, you know, 30 interviews over 14 days and like 20 million pieces of content. I was just like, I'm not doing that. However, the, my, the business coach I was working with suggested a one day, two hour summit. And I was like, yes, I can totally do that. So what we did, it was called the Myth of Balance, and I'll post the link below, but you can get it over at um, katenorthrop.com forward slash myth. And this had five experts, five entrepreneurial moms who I invited, and I interviewed them each for 20 minutes during this two hour period. So I had like left a little uh, time at the beginning for intros and a little time for my outro. And then each woman was on for 20 minutes and I interviewed them. I did it on GoToWebinar um, and it was just video conferencing. And people paid $25 to come to the summit. There was no upsell, I, we weren't selling anything. It was simply to hear the real life experiences of five entrepreneurial moms give their advice and wisdom on how to thrive as a mother running a business. And so that was a one day, just two hour summit. It was $25, so I did choose to charge for it. The women who were the influencers uh, who I invited, they were the exclusive affiliates of it, and they were welcome to mail their lists and do social media to post about it. They certainly didn't have to, um, but if they did, they got the full 100% affiliate commission. So if they mailed their list, they got $25 per person who signed up. So that was kind of a win-win for them. And then plus, it was great visibility for them as well. And, and you know, for somebody like um, Dr. Shafali Sabari, who was on it, she probably didn't need the visibility from me and my list, nor did Danielle Laporte, who also came on, but um, they were both awesome. And then my friend Liz Long was on, Sarah Jenks, and my friend Megan Watterson. So it was an amazing conversation. I got so much out of it. And it was a really fresh take on the summit idea because for me, um, having 
uh, signed up for summits before, I get very overwhelmed and I don't listen to anything because there are too many options. There are too many things and I feel like I'm missing everything so I'm not gonna do anything, right? It's one of those like perfectionistic moments where it's like, I can't do anything so I'll do nothing. How often do we do that, right? Let me know in the comments if you ever have those moments where you're like, I can't do everything, I can't do it all so I'm gonna do nothing, right? And we just opt out. That is a tendency of human beings and so that's to me why summits can be really overwhelming but I loved a two hour summit and actually charging for it felt really great because it was a low price point, it was 25 bucks. I know that we gave the value. People also got the recording and a companion guidebook resources list along with the recording uh, for their $25. And, um, and I felt really great about that because more people showed up live and I knew they would value it more and they would listen in a more powerful way. My friend James Wedmore says, the transformation comes through the transaction. And that when we charge for things, or we at least charge adequately for things, um, that people get more out of it, which is which is totally which is totally true. Um, if you are somebody who has had the experience of buying something free versus buy, I'm sorry, you don't buy something when it's free, of getting something for free, like a coaching session or you know an astrology session or something, versus paying for it, you I bet you got different results and you showed up in a very different way and you implemented the things that you learned from the things from the thing you bought versus the thing that was for free. When we get free content, we we often or free training or free coaching or whatever, we often don't implement it because we are just we don't value it as highly versus something we've paid for. So I really loved that two hour free summit. That was the myth of balance and you can get it over at katenorthup.com forward slash myth if you're curious what I'm talking about. Then the third list builder we did, which I also really loved, this was something different that we did this year that I really loved and that we'll totally do again, I think, was called the Create Space Guide. Um, and it was how to create space for what matters most. Um, and what I did is I asked 30 entrepreneurial moms I know for a quick snippet, whether they could deliver it uh, via voice memo, via text, a quick email, however they wanted to deliver it to me. A couple of them just said it in person because I was with them on how, as an entrepreneurial mom, how they create space for what matters most in their lives. And then we compiled the guide really beautifully in categories, so it was a beautifully designed PDF, um, like 30 pages it ended up being, and then in categories, there was a category about uh, self-care, prioritization, scheduling, delegating, there were all these sections with this really great wisdom from all of these incredible entrepreneurial moms, like, um, Carrie Ann Moss was in there, um, Alexandra Jameson, um, we just, I, so many of them, I, now I'm not even, uh, Latham Thomas, um, Danielle Laporte, Rachel Goldstein, it was really great. So that guide was available on my website, but then I also created, well I didn't personally, our graphic designer created shareable graphics for each of the women who contributed to the guide to share on social media or via email. So it, they each had a custom graphic of their beautiful face with the Create Space Guide branding and the and the link to get the Create Space Guide, which by the way, you can get for free over at katenorthup.com forward slash space. And so many of them shared the guide because they were proud to be a part of it and it was also value for their audiences. And so they shared the guide and people opted in to get the guide on my site. So that was, um, that was a list builder and then we ran Facebook ads to it. So those were our three strategies that are proven. They grew our list um, by over 6,000 people um, in the early part of this year, which was really great. And again, they were running a free challenge it was doing a just a mini summit, like a one day summit, it was two hours. And then the third thing was creating a guide, like a PDF guide of, of the answers from influencers on a specific topic that I knew my ideal customer would be interested in. My ideal customer is obviously entrepreneurial mops. And so these list building strategies were, have been very targeted to entrepreneurial moms because that those are the people I want on my list. Um, so you want to be thinking about who is it that you want on your list and then what kind of problems do they have and how can you provide a solution for their problem. So those are the three things we did. Um, if you, it was, it was not that much, you know, it was, yeah, there were some logistics for all of these things. I would not 
recommend for if you're just starting out, don't do three list builders at the beginning of the year. It's way too much. You know, maybe choose two list builders a year beyond your normal opt-in freebie that's on your site all the time. Maybe two, um, my friend Marie Forleo calls them um, sprints. They're sprints and marathons in list building and a challenge or having a free guide or like a webinar, things like that, those are called sprints. And then a marathon is, is like the opt-in freebie on your website. So I would choose one thing from the ones I said and then implement that. Let me know in the comments, do you resonate more with the idea of the challenge, of the one day summit, or of the influencer's guide? Let me know which one you're gonna implement. I'm really excited to hear from you. And if these kind of strategies appeal to you about growing your business in a way that really resonates with you, that feels authentic, that feels like it's serving your customer as well as growing your business at the same time, I would invite you to join my free workshop that's coming up starting May 9th. It's called the Sustainable Success Workshop, and you can sign up for free over at sustainablesuccessworkshop.com. And I will be teaching why time management is a waste of time and what to manage instead. I'll be teaching how to do less but get better results. And if you like the kind of strategies I've been sharing on these Facebook Lives, please join the workshop. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad all the comments are coming in. Malika is going to do a one-day summit. Maria is going to do the challenge. I'm so glad you did the one with me, Maria. Sue's is doing a podcast, which is also a list builder, by the way, that's great. Margaret's gonna do an influencer's guide. Liliane is gonna do a one day summit. Amazing, thank you all so much for joining in. Go over to sustainablesuccessworkshop.com and if you have further questions about this topic, please leave them in the comments below because I am gonna be popping in here once a day on weekdays and I'm happy to continue the conversation in a future Facebook Live. Have a great day. Bye. Oh, and please, by the way, share this. If this was helpful for you, share it with your friends who are also um, entrepreneurs who want to grow their email list. I'd be so grateful and they would be so grateful too. Bye.